All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Master Fader today. All right, so today is definitely going to be a shorty video because it's not that big a topic, to be honest. But it's something that I've seen students have issues with and um, students be a little confused about the differences here between the Master Fader and other tracks. And I wanted to just talk about a couple key features of the Master Fader. So to start with, let's talk about what the Master Fader is and what it does. So the Master Fader here in my YouTube example session, you can see that I have a Master Fader here. I have a bunch of plugins on it. If I switch to the mix window, I'm currently in the edit window. If I could do command equals to switch to the mix window, I can see it here as well. And the way you can tell if something is a Master Fader is it'll have this little sum symbol here. And that kind of gives us a hint as to what the Master Fader does, right? So the function of the Master Fader, usually the way that we use it, you don't have to use it this way, but usually the way that we use it is we have all of our audio in our session, all of our tracks in our session, and they are routed to that master fader before the audio then goes out. For example, your left and right speakers if you're working in stereo. So the master fader's job is that it's summing everything together and it's showing you how it's being summed together. It's showing you, for example, what the levels are when it's summed together. So the master fader is a great place to look to make sure, for example, that you're not clipping on the way out or that your levels aren't way too low. It's also a great place to look to add like polish to your final you know, mix your final whatever it is, mix your master, right? So um, a lot of times we'll add plugins here on the master fader, and that will be to kind of start some either prelim preliminary mastering or to put a little bit of polish on the overall thing, um, you know, get our levels to where we want them for the mix or the master, right? So the master fader is really helpful for making sure that, for example, our final piece is not too quiet. It's not too loud. It's not clipping and distorting. Um, it's great for looking at, you know, the overall frequency balance of everything, stuff like that. So that's what we tend to use the master fader for. The master fader is essentially designed to be the final track before everything goes out your speakers. I hope that makes sense. Now, the thing that I want to point out today that a lot of people don't, um, really understand or get or know about to begin with, right, is the idea of pre versus post fader and how it applies to the master fader. So we've talked about pre and post fader in, on this channel before. I'll put a link uh, probably up in the cards, maybe in the description as well, um, to a video that covers that topic. But the basic idea is, right, if you have something set to pre fader, for example, so with send, sometimes we will choose to have things pre fader. So if I make like a random send here, you can see we have the pre fader option and we can either have it on post or we can have it on pre. So right now it's on pre because it's lit up. And the basic idea there is that when something is pre-fader, what's happening is that the level is being sent out or the thing is happening before the actual fader for the track. So for example, if I set this to pre-fader and I bring this up and then I bring this track down, I will still be sending signal out this send. So if I, for example, I've done this type of thing before where, you know, I might mute it or whatever instead of bringing the fader down. But if I want to have like barely any of my normal track, right, and then I want to send to like a reverb, for example, and have it be like mostly in that like room reverb for my track, I can do it this way. I just flip it into pre-fader and then it sends out the signal and it is not affected by this fader here. So that's pre-fader, post-fader. Um, you know, might be kind of obvious, but when it's in post fader, the fader level will affect the, uh, you know, whatever the thing is, right? So it's either working independent of the fader on the track or it's being affected by it is the difference between pre and post fader. Now, with that said, in our audio tracks, our tracks in Pro Tools, right, we have our clip gain and then we have our plugins and then we have, for example, our fader. So let's look at this track. This is the track I was just on here. This is the same track here. So this is the same track. So in Pro Tools, a lot of people know, right, if you do something like you change the clip gain on something, that is at the beginning of your signal flow. So this clip gain is at the beginning of your signal flow. So if I bring this down, it's going to affect everything after it in the chain. So when we look at our uh, tracks in Pro Tools, it goes from the top down through the bottom, and that's the same in most DAWs. So for example, I just brought down the clip gain on this track, that will bring down the level that goes into all the plugins that I have here. So if I have an EQ and a compressor, for example, compressors care 
a lot more about the level that you're at going in, right? So um, if I have, for example, a compressor, it's going to bring down the level going into the compressor and it's going to affect the way the compressor changes the sound, the way it behaves. Similarly, you know, if I have sends and stuff, it's going to affect the level going out through the sends, um, you know, with everything else held constant. With that said, if I then adjust the fader level, that's going to be after all of these plugins and stuff. So a lot of times what we do is we play a game of managing our levels by adjusting the clip gain first. That affects everything going into our plugins. And then we will affect the volume fader afterwards, right? We know that that's the order that it goes in. So sometimes, for example, we might separate things out and adjust the clip gain and kind of even things out. I have videos where I've talked about that a little bit. This is a stereo master, so it's weird for me to be doing that. But um, I hope that makes sense. You know, we also have the clip gain lines thing where if we go to view, we can view clip gain lines and we can add some automation just like we do with our volume automation, right? Except we know that the clip gain lines will affect things before the plugins, whereas the volume automation affects things after the plugins. And so when you know how this works, right, it gives you independent control over the levels, over your gain staging as things progress through the signal flow. So with that said, we can think of our plugins as being pre-fader because our volume here is the fader, right? It's attached to the fader. If I click around here and I view the fader here, it's going to match wherever my volume automation is, right? It's the same thing. So the plugins affect the sound before the fader, so they are pre-fader. I hope that makes sense. Um, so we can think about our plugins as being pre-fader, but the thing is that with the master fader, it's different. So with the master fader, our plugins are post fader. So what that means, for example, is that if you bring down the volume on the master fader itself, it's affecting the sound that's going into the plugins, not the sound that comes out afterwards. And that's what makes it very different from the other tracks. And that's why I wanted to make this video today. Um, so if you're adjusting your master fader level, it is affecting things up here before the plugins, not afterwards like it would be if you were adjusting things on any of your other tracks, right? Any of your other tracks, it would be after the plugins. You're taking the output of the plugins and then you're affecting the levels. Whereas with this, you're affecting the level and it affects the input to the plugins. So I figure that this is probably because the master fader is designed to be that final track before going out to your speakers. But this is also why I often, and this might just be me being lazy, right? But I often will not change the master fader level. I will leave it at zero. Um, I would prefer usually to adjust things with the tracks themselves as opposed to adjusting things with the master fader. I just like knowing that my gain staging is a little more solid um, and I like not relying on um, the system's ability to counteract any like, you know, clipping from, from individual tracks. So what I like to do is I will adjust the levels for my tracks themselves before going into the master fader and then I just do not touch this. But with that said, this is also why I will often have a trim plugin. So I'll often have this plugin here towards the end. I don't have one already, do I? No, towards the end of my signal chain, right? And I might have it adjusted a little bit. Um, but I'm doing that because if I want to bring the level down overall, and actually I'm, I usually will have this as the last one, not that you know, we're talking about that. But anyway, um, the point is, this is accessing the level in a different point than this is able to, right? Because this, again, is affecting the level way up here before all of these. So that's why, you know, one of my most common uses for the trim plugin is to have it here towards the end of my master fader. And that's just because it's giving me that, um, that control after the plugins that, um, you know, I might be kind of used to having a little bit. I might kind of want to use a little bit, right? So yeah, that's it. That's the idea that I wanted to cover today. It's the idea that all the plugins on the master fader are actually post fader, which is different than what we learn with all our other tracks in Pro Tools, right? So I hope someone finds this useful. I hope you find it helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise, And we have additional content. We have a Discord server that we're hanging out on. That's the big thing I've been focusing on lately. We have an audio engineering book club on there. It's just a few of us. 
Um, we're all really nerdy, really into it. Everyone's really nice. So um, come hang out if you feel so inclined. You can just hang out in the Discord server. You don't have to attend the book club or anything, right? Um, but it does help support my channel. So thank you so much to my Patreon patrons. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. Oh my gosh, I had such a good time at the Mix Her event. Um, it was the first ever cohort of the Mix Her event, and it's a Dolby Atmos training program. Um, and we had the in-person portion in Nashville, and it was awesome. Um, they gave us a bunch of swag. I'm wearing my my Grammys hoodie right now that they gave us. And it was just, it was so amazing. It was, the quality of the mentors was unbelievable. Um, the ratio of mentors to students was really, really good. Uh, the mentors themselves were very good at uh, teaching and explaining things, which is not always the same as doing, right? Um, and it was just the whole event was run so well. Like we had a great balance of learning a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of really helpful, useful information, and then also having fun, right? So um, I don't know, just thank you to everyone that organize that event I had such a good time I can't even like my brain's still exploding from how awesome it was so um, I'm really really very very appreciative and if you may qualify for the mix her program I would definitely recommend applying if you're interested in learning how to mix music in Dolby Atmos I definitely recommend it it was great now I just have to figure out how to leverage it right so I'm kind of launching into that stage of the game so if anyone has any ideas for how I could leverage my new Dolby Atmos skills, let me know. I'm working on getting a setup in here. Um, and I don't know, hopefully I can figure it out. Cool. I think that's all I have to say. So I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you soon.